Welcome to Remake Review, where I take a look at a remake and see if it's better, worse, or about the same as the original. Today, I'm looking at the Secret of Monkey Island Special Edition, a complete overhaul of the original 1990 classic adventure game. The original version of the game used pixels in a way that's honestly kind of incredible given the time period, particularly when you get close-ups of people's faces during what pretty much amounts to cutscenes. Without voice or very much sound, the game often has to rely on its animation to carry the whole thing, and the art style does a fantastic job of it. On the other hand, Special Edition uses a beautiful new painterly art style that looks fantastic, but it does definitely lack some of the charm of the original. Some animations could come off a bit stiff since it seems like each frame was drawn manually and they skip a lot of the frames in between, so animations aren't nearly as smooth. Still, the new art style fits the game well, and is probably the better way to experience the game on a high resolution display. Now, graphics really comes down to personal preference, and for me, I have to give it to the original art style. Both are impressive in their own way, but the pixelated style is far more lively. It feels like the characters are alive instead of just paintings moving around and talking to one another. For any game, its interface is important. For an adventure game, it's absolutely crucial. Since there's no direct control, the only way you have to influence the world around you is through the UI. Now, the original version uses what most would consider to be the traditional adventure game UI. In a world before contextual left-clicking or verb coins, you had to click what you were going to do, then click the object you wanted to do it with. Special Edition system, on the other hand, is really weird. In order to pick the action you want to perform, you have to use the scroll wheel to pick the one you want, then left click. This game was released on consoles as well, and I can definitely see the system working better there, but to be frank, it sucks on PC. So I really have to give a nod to the original DOS game on interface. There is so much more that could have been done here, but the developers opted to go for a more friendly interface designed for consoles that is absolutely frustrating on PCs, which still remain the best place to play adventure games. In the original golden age of adventure games, sound was probably the most important part of the entire package. Pixel art is great, but because of the rudimentary nature of those graphics, it often fell to the sound to carry the comedy and reinforce the action happening on the screen. Of course, you can only fit so much in the way of audio samples on a floppy disk, and even in the CD version, the sparsity of sound effects is rather prominent. Only some of the locations are given music, which often makes the game dead silent. A rather odd experience when most modern games are never completely silent. There's always something happening in the background of the scene, even if it is just ambience. The new version has a completely remastered and redone soundtrack with the ambience that is so noticeably lacking from the original, but far more importantly, it has voices. For the most part, it uses the voice actors that have become synonymous with the roles for the main characters, and the other non-recurring characters have voices that fit extremely well. There's nothing like the hot winds of hell blowing in your face. At the end of the day, I love the original version of Secret of Monkey Island. It's an amazing and classic adventure game, but the special edition is simply superior in most ways. Sure, the interaction system is quite lacking, and I do like the pixel style of the original, but the advantages of the new one outweigh those few negatives. Plus, you can switch back and forth between styles at any time, allowing you to, with a single purchase, experience both versions of the game, the best of both worlds. Every Monday, I look at games that are at least 10 years old, in a modern context. Sometimes that entails looking at their remakes, but oftentimes it just means looking at an old game and seeing if it's still worth playing today. If you're into that idea, be sure to subscribe so you can catch the latest reviews. If you like this video in particular, be sure to hit that like button, and thanks for watching.